my name is Gillian and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to create images that can be used as the custom thumbnail images of your YouTube videos. Designing a good thumbnail for your YouTube videos is extremely important because when someone is deciding whether or not to watch your video, they're going to base their decision mostly on that thumbnail. They don't have very much information about your video before they watch it, really only that thumbnail, the title, and perhaps that little preview clip that YouTube shows us now. But the design of your thumbnail will greatly affect whether or not people choose to watch it, and that decision can affect whether or not YouTube chooses to share your video with more potential viewers later on. So long story short, it's really important that you have a good thumbnail and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in today's video. The most important aspect of your thumbnail is simply that it is the right size. Your thumbnail needs to be 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. If it's not that size, then it can't be your thumbnail. So that's the most important part. Now there's plenty of different ways that you can design the thumbnail itself. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do it with a free design program called Canva, as well as with Photoshop. So here we are on Canva, and this is the easiest way to create the thumbnail because Canva really helps you along, but it is a little challenging sometimes because you don't have as much control over it as you would with a program like Photoshop. So if you're on Canva, all you need to do is select their template for YouTube thumbnails, and this will be 1280 by 720 automatically. Once this loads, then you can add elements to it, such as different colored backgrounds, so I could add this square of color here and I could make it fill out the entire thumbnail and I could change it to any color that I wanted and that can be the background. However, what I normally do is I use a picture for the background, so a picture normally of me and I would make that take up the entire background and then I might add some text over the top of this to say what the video itself is actually about. Of course, you can resize that text and you can change it to a different font, whatever font you prefer. And then there are two problems that happen very frequently if you are adding text and an image. One of them is that the text might not fit with the image. And so in order to solve that problem, we need to resize the image and move it around so that there is enough blank space somewhere in the photo so that the words aren't on top of the face of the person in the picture. So in this case, I'm just going to pull it up like this so that my head is up near the top of this part uh, where we can see the actual top of the thumbnail is and pull it down a little bit. So I'm moving myself very close to this right hand side of the thumbnail so that the text itself will have plenty of room to be separate from me. And then I'm going to make the text a little bit bigger to make it fit in there. So the other problem you might run into is that it might be hard to read the text if the picture is very distracting. If there isn't a big completely blank space in your picture, then the text might be hard to read. Now there are a few different solutions to this problem. The very easiest one is to add one of these squares of color. And what I've done many times in the past is to turn it at a bit of an angle and make it fill one portion of my thumbnail image and then to move it behind the text itself and then obviously to change the colors to whatever I want them to be. An easy solution is to change it to white and then to make it semi-transparent because then it easily fits in with the photo and it doesn't just look like one small picture over on the side and then a big chunk of text over on the other side, but it kind of melds a little bit more smoothly. And then of course we might want to reposition the text so that it is centered and you could make it so the text is extending over your portion of color or you could make it so that it is fully contained within that colored portion. All right, so that's basically how to design a thumbnail with Canva. So now let's take a look at how to do this with Photoshop. So here I am inside Photoshop and the first thing we need to do is to create a new document that has the right dimensions, 1280 by 720. Because I have created many documents with these dimensions in the past, I have the option to select it from my recent files, but if that isn't already available for you, then you can just type it in under width and height. Then just click create, and then you can add the elements of your design to this blank canvas that you have before yourself. As with the thumbnail I created in Canva, I'm going to add an image and I'm going to add some text. To add the image, I'm just going to right click right here and choose open documents so that I can find a picture on my computer that I want to use. Now, of course, I have a lot of pictures on my computer, but I have one file full of pictures that are screenshots from my videos, and I often use those pictures for my thumbnails. 
So as you can see, I have a whole lot of different pictures here. So I'm just going to choose one that I want to use for this thumbnail. And in this case, I think I'll go with this image right here. So then I'll just select open and it will open it in a separate tab. But all you need to do is make sure that you have this tool selected, the grabber tool, and then you can click and hold on the image and drag it over into the thumbnail document. And then I'm just going to resize this picture. In this case, because it was an image taken as the screenshot from a video, it wasn't huge, but sometimes when you add these pictures in here, they will be huge and you'll need to do a lot of resizing. And then from here, I'm going to resize it a little bit more so that it fills the frame in the way that I want it to. I want myself to be over on the right hand side of the image and that will leave me plenty of room for text over here on the left hand side. Okay, so now I wanna show you how to do something inside Photoshop that you wouldn't be able to do with Canva, which is a reason that you might wanna choose Photoshop instead of Canva, perhaps. So all I'm going to do is select the quick selection tool right here and then I'm going to make sure I have the correct layer selected and I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger and then I'm just going to go over the picture and select myself from the picture. Now this quick selection tool might select a little bit more than just me but that's okay. I'll go back and clean it up in just a minute here. So now that I'm satisfied with the selection I'm going to right click and select feather so that I can make it blend correctly. And in this case, I'm going to use a feather radius of three pixels, which will just make the edges look a little bit softer. And then I'll just click OK. And then I'll right click again, and I will layer via copy. Now basically what this has done is it has made a copy of just the me portion of the picture that is separate from the picture itself. So now if I choose the selection tool, I could actually grab myself and move myself and there are two of me. Now you can also layer via cut, which would be to actually cut myself out of the picture. Uh, and that certainly can work as well, but I like to do it this way so that if I mess up something with the selection, I still have the original picture completely intact. Okay, and now at this point you have a few different options. Basically the purpose of all this is so that I can leave myself looking really nice and crisp and clear and bright and have the picture of me really pop, but make the background much more muted or blurred so that it will blend into the background completely and I can add some words over top and the background won't distract from those words. So like I said, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. You could desaturate the background, you could really blow out the background and make it really bright and white. Um, or one of the simplest ways is just to make a square of transparent color over the background. Uh, so let me show you a couple of those different ways. First of all, let's select the background and then choose the adjustment pane. And I'll show you what I mean by how you could just blow it out. So in this case, we would wanna make the background extremely bright and then we would wanna really reduce the contrast of the background. And so depending on your image, that could work. And then we'll just undo that. Another thing that you could do would be to select the saturation and completely desaturate it um, or partially desaturate it just so that the color isn't so distracting. It kind of depends on what is distracting in the background. If the distracting part is that there's a lot of dark and light, then you'll need to reduce that contrast. If the distracting aspect is that there's lots of different colors, then you might want to desaturate. Now, like I said, there's one more way, which is simply to add a block of color. So let me show you how to do that. So to add a block of color, I'm, all I'm going to do is select the rectangle tool and then draw a large rectangle over the picture. And then I'm going to change that rectangle in this case to be white, although of course you could make it any color you want. And then I'll simply change the opacity so that it is only about 50% opaque. Now, of course, you could make this much more opaque so that the background is almost completely covered, or you could make it much less opaque so that the background just looks a little bit more subtle. In this case, I'll go with that roughly 50%. And now we could add some text to this image and the background won't distract from the text so much. Okay, so now we have this text here and we can change the color to whatever we like. In this case, let's change that color to black just for the sake of keeping it simple. And then let's make it left aligned and we'll make it a lot bigger so that it will fill up most of the left hand portion of the image. And we'll also increase the spacing there so that it isn't so cramped up. And then let's move that over and see how big it is. We probably want it to be a bit bigger at this point. So we'll just resize it. And as you can see right now, it's behind me. So there's all sorts of cool things you could do with that. However, for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to leave it as it is and position it right there in the corner. 
Okay, so at this point, we're done with this thumbnail image. However, you probably noticed that neither of these thumbnail designs are really all that awesome. So now you understand how to use Canva, how to use Photoshop to make them, but let's talk about how to figure out what your design actually should be. There are two different resources that I would recommend you look at to find ideas for awesome thumbnail designs. The first one is in a software like Canva itself. You'll find a lot of different templates. So here we are back in Canva, and as you can see, here's the image that we just designed, but over here, if we select templates from the menu, then we can scroll through all of these templates and we can get lots of different ideas for how we could arrange our picture and our text to make a really awesome looking thumbnail. And of course, you always have the option of simply using a photo as the thumbnail. That's become a popular choice of many YouTubers over the last couple of years. And if you have a thumbnail that works with what your video is about and is really eye-catching, then it can be a great option. Just make sure that you do resize the image so that it is actually 1280 by 720, because if it's not, then you'll end up with some ugly black bars on the sides or on the top and the bottom of that image, and it won't look very nice or very professional. The easiest way to resize an image like that is to do exactly what we just did to actually design a thumbnail image, open up that template document in Canva, or open up a document inside Photoshop that is 1280 by 720, drag your image onto that document template, and then simply export it as a PNG. Now the other great place to get ideas for YouTube thumbnails is actually on YouTube itself. So just head over to youtube.com and then you can scroll through some of your favorite channels and see what sorts of images they're using for their thumbnails and how they are designing their thumbnails. Are they adding text? Are they adding graphics? Which thumbnails do you like? Another great option can be to sort their videos by most popular and see which thumbnails have performed the very best for them. Once you find some videos that you really like the thumbnails of and you want to use them as inspiration, just save them to a playlist called Thumbnails for future reference. Before we wrap this up, let's just take a moment to talk about how to actually export your thumbnail images. If you're inside Canva, then all you need to do is click this arrow button, select download, and make sure that you have file type PNG selected, and then push the download button. On the other hand, if you're in Photoshop, then select export, and quick export as PNG. You can name your file whatever you like, and then just click that save button and your thumbnail will be saved and you can upload it to your video. If you need to know how to upload your custom thumbnail to your YouTube video, then check the description below because I just made a video about how to do exactly that that you'll find really helpful. And in the video, I even explained how to upload a custom thumbnail to your video if your channel is brand new and you don't have any subscribers yet because YouTube often doesn't let you do that unless you verify your channel. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial of how to design custom thumbnails for your videos. Obviously, there's a few different options here. You can choose Canva or Fotor if you want an easier route, or you can use Adobe if you want a little bit more flexibility and control over your thumbnail designs. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you found it really helpful. If you want to see more videos in the future like this about entrepreneurship, success, personal development, and how to run a YouTube channel, I talk a lot about that here. So be sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video helps you grow your YouTube channel really quickly, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.